I know, I know. I promised last video that this next one would be about the Canon EOS R5HS. I can't even remember what the letter was. But today we do have something special to talk about, and that is the Sony A7S III. I got it right here. We're gonna do a super quick unboxing because this is gonna be a long video. So let's get straight into it. Pull up the box. Boom, one flap, two flaps. I'll flip it around for you guys to see. Okay, this is a little HDMI slash port uh, protector. This is just a USB-C cord, uh, manuals, and a lottery ticket for Sony prepaid card. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, coming in here, I wish this chair raised higher because I feel really low. Uh, in here, yeah, we got the strap. That will never be used. Um, battery charger, that is good to see that they are including the charger actually now. Some more cords underneath that, nothing too fancy. And then the moment we have been waiting for, that was my drum roll. And what is this tomfoolery? That's the A7 III. Well, the joke's on you because we've been filming this entire video with the A7S III. And I can see myself in that flippy screen. That's actually why we're doing it is because I like the flippy screen and I don't want to have to sync up my phone to Sony imaging app to see where I'm sitting. It's just absurd to me. So before we go any deeper, I want to quick say a huge thank you to Shane O'Donnell. He is actually letting me borrow this camera. This is not mine. Mine is still in transit. It's a very long story, but I don't know when I'm getting mine. He just happened to get his pre-order delivered like on the 24th, which is like the day of. So congrats to Shane. <laughs> and a huge thank you to him because he's letting me unbox his camera, let me shoot with it for an entire day. And, and on top of that, he gave me like four full frame, different E-mount lenses for me to test out and borrow. So um, really got some exciting shots with those. Man, you're the GOAT, you're a legend. So thank you. I'm gonna link his channel in the description and if he has come out with his unboxing slash initial thoughts video yet, that will be also in the iCard. I think that's the right side. Ah, oh, shoot, that's not the right side. It'll be linked in the iCard here if it's out. But uh, you know that we here at Ben Martin YouTube channel, we pump out the videos pretty quickly. So we'll see if he can keep up. In this video, we're going over quite a few things. We wanna talk about kind of a comprehensive first look. I know it's kind of contradicting, but we really wanna take this camera through its paces. And the fact that I only had one day to shoot with it, um, there are a lot of things that I have done for this video. We're gonna look at low light, of course, because it's an A7S camera. We're gonna look at photography. We're gonna talk a little bit about which picture profile is the best for your shooting needs and, and mine. All of its different shooting modes with bit depths and color subsampling, just so many things. So before I bore you guys anymore, wow, I'm amazed at this camera. I know that so many YouTubers were making pre-production uh, model reviews out of it and you know, I, I thought it was gonna be good. I just didn't know that it would be this good. Now to address the title of this video, a lot of people have been claiming this camera to be the perfect camera, especially for its price point. Um, obviously if it would cost more money and cameras that do cost more money, you would expect a little more out of them. Um, but for $3,500, this camera really does offer you so freaking much. Um, and very few compromises, but we are also gonna talk about those compromises today. So firstly, I'm going to roll my first ever hands-on with this camera when Shane gave it to me. That's weird, the cold door kind of feels like, like have you? Oh, like it's weird. extent, oh yeah. yeah. It's, like, oh. it's like out there a little bit. That feels like it's gonna come off. <laughs> For sure, <laughs> like it's just gonna be gone. Also, I sat there on the video like, how do I open this? <laughs> yeah, pull it out. I'm so used to the other one, you just flick it and it goes. Oh, that's weird, so you like go sideways and then yeah, out. Yeah. Wow, the, uh, the screen. The exposure compensation dial has a lock though. Super nice. Mine turns all the time. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, we gotta turn the, the beep off too. Yeah. It doesn't see your... Your eyes, it just does the face. Yeah, it's just gonna face too. I wanna see the, the eye button. What are your initial thoughts of the... I can't even get my initial thoughts because... <laughs> you can't even get through the settings. <laughs> oh, 240. 420, we want, we want 10 bit, 422. 240, SQ, oh, so it'll output to... Oh, we wanna do 24, we yeah. want the full 10 times. Oh, there we go, Nuts. okay. All 
right, this man was making fun of me because I had a micro SD card adapted, but it is a V90 card. He was making fun of me, and then he tried to record 4K 120 with his card. It wouldn't work, not fast enough. Then he tries my micro SD card. Daddy, chill. And it worked. Did you hear what I said? What? I chased a squirrel and he chased it too and then it ran up a tree. Oh, you chased it with him? Yeah, I chased it with him. Did you go up the tree? I can't climb the tree. Sure you can. One thing that you guys will have to really work through is getting used to the settings. So it took so long to find everything and I've been shooting on the a7 III for a little bit and I'm kind of comfortable with the settings here. It just felt so foreign to me and that certainly did take some getting used to and just to find like the things that I wanted. It took like 10 minutes to find picture profiles. It's absurd. But I do think that now I do know where everything is and I'm comfortable with it to a degree like eight hours later because I have been shooting a lot with this camera. And so the only benefit of like the new menu system is that it, it's touch operable. Um, other than that, I kind of wish that it would have been the same menu and still had the touch capabilities but I am gonna get used to it. So that is kind of my fault and for me to figure out. The overall body and feel of the camera, the grip, this is not it, feels very good. In, in comparison to the a7 III, um, right underneath here, kind of the lip where it holds your third, your middle finger, oh, it's much deeper. So it does feel comfortable sitting there. And if you have had hands on with the a7R4, you would know that. The port door threw me off. I don't love it because it juts out on the side. Um, so if you're if you're swiping your thumb like this, you can kind of feel the port door and it's it's not like a pleasant feeling It's like kind of like a sharp plastic edge that barely sticks out um, And it's also just a little bit more fiddly to get open and closed. I will get used to it These are all things that aren't deal breakers by any means and if you're actually complaining about them from a genuine place of like disdain for the camera Dude, just, just get over yourself. For some, they might be uncomfortable because the video record button has been moved to the front of the camera right next to the shutter. Um, it is a little bit more arthritic and uncomfortable to press the record button than it is to press the shutter. So basically the two best options for this is either one to remap it to the C1, the custom one button on the back of the camera, which is kind of where the old record button on previous full frame alpha cameras is. Or, instead of doing that, you could just add it to the shutter button, which is what I do, and that's perfectly comfortable for me. Gerald Dunn briefly talked about uh, an issue that he was having, and I know Josh Yo had that same problem, another YouTuber who reviewed the a7S III, and that is with memory cards. So uh, some of the recording modes didn't support the memory card that they should have supported, and I did run into that problem um, when I was recording in 4K, 60 FPS, all I, at 600 megabits per second. My V90 SD card, it choked, it couldn't handle it. And it, it, all of a sudden, it went, my camera went into recovery mode, and I could either choose to recover that one file and potentially damage all of the other files on that card, or just give up that one clip that I shot and just switch the camera into either HEVC or the standard long group of pictures shooting mode and just redo the shot. So that's what I chose to do. I just did HEVC, but um, that was kind of frustrating, and we did have that same problem with 4K 120 um, the day before when I was shooting with Shane, but that problem only arose on his V60 cards. My V90 card worked with 4K 120, not like all I, S and Q, because no SD card will work with that. You will need a CF Express Type A card to do that. Now, one thing that I was super excited for uh, in this camera is raw shooting. I even, in preparation, repurchased an Atomos Ninja 5, but that is when I found out that one 10 second clip of raw footage, and granted this isn't DCI 4K, I, I didn't like find the actual number for um, UHD 4K because the a7S 3 doesn't do DCI, um, but 10 seconds of that is 1.17 gigabytes in the regular ProRes raw, not the high quality mode. Uh, uh, my SSD that I had offered me 23 minutes of record time and it was 500 gigabytes. Now some of you, that, that might not surprise you in the least and you might be thinking, well Ben, you're just stupid if you thought that a 500 gigabyte uh, SSD could have even handled RAW for like more than 30 minutes. And to that, you're absolutely right. I, I am stupid. So just be aware that the cost of storage, I guess regardless of what you're planning to shoot, if you want to shoot all I uh, in 120 FPS, that's going to be expensive because CF Express Type A cards are pretty pricey. But also on the other side of it, if you want to externally record with ProRes RAW, that's going to be so pricey, man. Good luck. And let's talk about the different codecs, actually. So I did use almost every codec that was like 4K oriented. So I didn't use the, the Longop 
4K, just because that's compressed H.264 4K, so you're, you're just kind of losing some, some quality there. I did try the XAVC HS, HEVC, H.265, same thing. Um, I tried the All I H.264, and I also tried the, well, that's all I tried. And I also tried All I 1080p. I do really appreciate the ability to have 1080p in like All I, the highest quality possible with 10-bit 422, that is kind of crazy. And you're really getting like the best 1080p out of pretty much any mirrorless camera. All right, so moving on from Codex, let's talk about low light. This is an interesting thing because the A7S series has always been revered as just supreme low light capabilities, being able to see in the dark. And with this camera, well, it's no exception. Let's dive into the low light test. All right, gang, so it's late, it's dark. Uh, what better time to test low light performance than right now? We're recording in 4K um, XAVC SI, the all intra mode. So this is apparently 240 megabits per second. Um, and we're at ISO 6400. So we're in HLG3 as well. I'm only gonna test low light in the two profiles that I will pretty much exclusively be using. I might even use standard, who knows, like if I need a super fast turnaround on a video project. But more than likely, I'm going to be only using HLG3 or S-Log3 because these are the two picture profiles that will get you the highest amount of dynamic range. So yeah, I, I do actually want to make a video on HLG3 and S-Log3 in the future comparing the two um, in different low light, regular shooting modes, like different situations and scenarios. So before I continue to ramble on, let's get started with a low light test. This is 12,800, 16,000. 20,000, oh, this looks fantastic, what the F? 25,600, 32,000, 40,000, 51,200, 64,000, 80,000, 102,000. Okay, that's probably where it stops getting usable. Okay, so now we dropped it all the way down to ISO 10,000 and we're gonna test S-Log3 in low light. I am expecting S-Log3 to perform worse than HLG3 simply because log footage usually doesn't do as well as like a profile like Cine4 or even an HLG where the black levels are just lower than log. So let's test it out. 12,800, 16,000. So 12,800 is where it should have cleaned up. 20,000, 25,600, 32,000, and it, st it still says our exposure level is at zero, zero, so we're perfectly exposed. 40,000, all right, now we're starting to get slightly overexposed. 51,200, 64,000, 80,000, and 102,000. Which one looked better? Ah, I just got up to take a drink of water. I also forgot no record limits. That is nice, because I can afford to get up, drink some water while it's still recording and sit back down. Obviously the benefits of having no record limit extend much further beyond just that, but uh, it is convenient. All right, so right now we're in all I 10 bit, 1080p, um, 24 frames per second by the way. And the sequence that you guys are about to watch is a nice little compilation of 1080p, 24 all I, 4K, 24 all I, and 4K 60 HEVC, and all of this footage is in 10 bit, so you guys can see how the different codecs and file recording sizes compare. Yeah, so this sequence is gonna feature my girlfriend, it's gonna feature her job, she takes care of uh, the bird cages here at Bethel, and it's also gonna feature these guys. Hey, what are you guys doing? What are you doing? 
You eating the buckwheat? Thank you. You look like you've eaten a lot of it, actually. Oh, you are a cutie. All right, again, just blown away by all the modes that I tried, ex except for all I 60p and 4K, because it just took a crap on me. Um, but yeah, that, that looked fantastic to me. I want to know what you guys think. And if you have stuck it out this far, please give this video a like. Comment in the section below what you thought on that little sequence, what you think on this camera, and let's continue the review. In photo taking mode, I wasn't expected to be very uh, blown away by its capabilities. However, I do like the viewfinder. It doesn't look that crazy to me. Um, and I, I am nearsighted, so I did make sure to adjust the viewfinder to my vision or lack thereof. But still, even though it looked like as clear as it was gonna look for me, it doesn't look like, like real life. But I'm being a spoiled brat because it is like a nine million pixel EVF. It's pretty incredible. I do wish they would have instead um, made the screen higher resolution as opposed to the EVF because this isn't a photo camera um, first. It's a video camera first. So I'm in a group communications class and we're doing a group activity today. So we're gonna take some photos and see how the a7S III with its 12 megapixel sensor can handle photography. I'm not planning to crop in. These are just super basic photos. I probably won't even edit them to be honest. So let's do this. In the realm of photography, I was impressed with some of the images that I got. After cropping in slightly, I kind of wasn't able to tell if I either missed focus or if it was just lower resolution because I cropped in. It's probably the, the second one because this camera has blazingly fast autofocus speeds. It was a pleasure to work with it and to really customize how I wanted my focus change and my focus pinpointing to look. So yeah, even if you are a photographer on the side or even in professionally, this can take some really great looking photos. I'm pretty sure that my editing added a lot of like visual grain and kind of took away some sharpness. So just be aware of that. Oh man, you know, I think that's, I think that's kind of it. I haven't really said anything that hasn't already been said about this camera, but I do really just think that it is an incredible piece of gear and it's something that you can really grow with as a filmmaker and even as a photographer if you so choose. But yeah, I was looking for a camera that I could just keep for the rest of my college career without having to worry about it not being good enough. And I really do think that this camera is my best shot at doing so at the price that I could realistically afford. So yes, this is a very expensive camera. And yes, if you do order it now, you probably will have to wait a, quite a while to get it actually in your hands. And who knows how long that mine will take to arrive. But that's the deal with pre-ordering cameras, especially during a global pandemic. That's it from me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do give it a thumbs up if you did, um, or dislike it if you didn't enjoy it. Subscribe to my channel. Be sure to turn on post notifications because we are uploading every Monday and Thursday at 4 p.m. almost sharp, give or take a few minutes. We'll see you in the next video, guys.